In the podcast this week, we decided to mix it up, bring a guest. We invited, well, the man of the minute in Hull, our good friend. Uh, let me introduce Red Eye the Jedi, Phoenix, yeah. a.k.a. Steve Arnott, <laughs> a.k.a. A Northern Soul. Oh. Hey. He, yeah, put it together now. Steve is an independent artist, performer, entrepreneur, community leader and father of two. Name Red Eye Phoenix, which comes from Phoenix Crew. Yeah. Which is pretty much your earliest project, right, yeah, when you started rapping. Yeah, yeah. Before you went on to have a solo career, being fundamental, I would say, I think we'd all agree, mm -hmm. in the development of the hip-hop and rap scene in Hull. Yep. So you're a bit of a, a, bit of a godfather <laughs> to a degree, <laughs> okay. don't you think? Hello, you. <laughs> He's now a community leader and an entrepreneur with his pioneering Beats Bus, whose aim is to bring access to music, uh, access, such as music studio equipment and mentoring, as well as performances and musical publications featuring young people from some of the less fortunate parts of Hull. Yes, and to top all of that off, he's the star of the acclaimed documentary by director Sean McAllister and Northern Soul, that which follows Steve's journey from factory floor worker who hates his job, is that fair? For real. To taking the leap into following his dream and bringing the hip hop vibes to the youths of Hull. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Eye the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, so to, so to, <laughs> I spent 10 minutes writing it earlier. So, so to summarise, he's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, okay, yeah. Fair, fair. So I That's think the quick version. Because you're on our podcast, yeah, the best thing to start off with, nice and relaxed, is how we all first met each other. Because yeah, yeah. we've obviously worked with each other a few times over the years. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you remember I how we first man. met? I watched you guys at Umber Street Sesh. Right. Yeah, and I thought, these guys are wicked. Cheers, man. <laughs> That's, That's how we first and then, met. And that... It wasn't long after that, I think, where you performed at our EP launch. Yeah, yeah, launch. Album launch, right? Album that would have been 2014. 2014, 2014, 2014 so yeah. Very four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I remember, right, a very giddy guy, yeah, who brought, like, all his mum and everything <laughs> to the show because he was, like, proper excited to be on the show. Proper killed it, and to be honest, hey man, that was a good show. A good chunk of our audience was due to you, mate. We realised that later, didn't we? Every other fun family there. Yeah, when we, when we tried to put on shows with just a few people, it's like, nah, mate, this isn't working. Really. <laughs> yeah, I think we had most of Hull on that roster, to be honest. Yeah, it was good. It was, good it was a good that night. Was man. Sellout, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, mm. fruit, fruit, no longer there either, is it? Like, and that Rest was in peace. That was. Um, so what, what point was that, would you say? What was going on like in your life at that point? Was that 2014? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so... My daughter would have been about two or three. Yeah. So yeah, I think I was like just starting to do proper solo stuff after yeah, Project yeah. Phoenix had fell apart. Right. Mm -hmm. That really like took the wind out of my sails, man. I yeah. was gutted. Like, yeah. Me and Dave went through a lot when Jinx left and had to go on and stuff like we had loads of plans going and then all of a sudden that happened and it just it so, so do you want to explain that a little bit then because a lot of people might not know about yeah yeah about yeah the, so the phoenix crew we was in the crew called project phoenix there was me uh baby jinx from malawi right akima akima yeah yeah it was now the bongo flavor, flavor, bongo yeah. flavor. Yeah, right yeah, cool yeah. cool and a kid called young salem right so we, we made an album dave was managing us yeah we made an album, we was just about to release it, we had a UK tour planned and everything, and then um, Jinx got deported. Back to Malawi? Yeah, yeah, back to Malawi, like, for reasons I don't want to go into, but they weren't very serious at all, it was just a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Like, the police rushed into his shop and handcuffed him and stuff, and just no took way. him, we couldn't yeah. speak to him or anything. Man. No way. Yeah, yeah. And then when you, next time you talked to him, what was on the phone or something? It was, I don't think I spoke to him for about three months, because of all the, all the bullshit was going on yeah. with him having to be took home and stuff so yeah yeah it was about three months i mean i ended up going to see him in africa and stuff so that was really cool but yeah yeah you know yeah just i said to you bro didn't i, I said that's it i'm hanging my mic up you know yeah, i can't i can't be doing with this anymore yeah man. and what an album was the mic down then for man not too long right <laughs> yeah, you can never too, leave it yeah, down yeah. can you not too long man yeah. about a year though i was like not feeling not feeling it at all yeah like yeah yeah and then what made you um and so, like, the Phoenix crew, yeah, so this would have been, like, when it was more of an American-influenced uh, rap style, right? Yeah, Is this yeah. when you had your... Um, is this guys when you used to come from America? Yeah, I remember <laughs> seeing some of the videos, right? Yeah, these guys, like... Because when I was younger, I'd sent off a few demos, and everyone was like, oh, no, your Yorkshire accent 
drop it, you're not going to get anywhere yeah, like that. And yeah. then I met these guys and they talked me into like yeah. dropping it a bit. And it was like, and um, you did like it was a bit of a snow, to be honest. Yeah, like, like, fall, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Fair. And then, so what? What made what made you take that switch from the the sort of American sort of accent into like just like embracing your own accent? Just bad, just bad feedback. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are you doing rapping like that for? And yeah, it's just bad feedback, man. I was like, of course I can rap in an English in a whole accent. It's, it's I just chose not to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It makes an interesting point though, doesn't it? Because like, if you think like it's quite common in it among a lot of people who are first getting into hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially if you grow up listening to yeah. American based hip hop yeah. and like. I think back then. No one would even take you seriously if you're wrapped in like a British accent. No, yeah, you yeah. had to put an American yeah, one on. Yeah. Whereas now it's like the complete opposite. Like yeah. you, you have to rap in your actual accent. Mm. Yeah. And that's yeah, why yeah. you get so many variations. Yeah. So yeah, it was just like people, yeah, just saying like, what are you doing that for, man? Just rapping your own accent. So, yeah. So you did. Yeah, I just brought out three albums in my own accent. <laughs> <laughs> which, is what, which is what it needs to be, mate. Because I mean, that's what's, that's what's going on. And potentially that's what brought all of the sort of film and the Northern Soul thing together because mm. it was an authentic whole story. Yeah, mm. yeah. How did you find yourself as the star of your own film, mate? Like, because <laughs> when I found out... He's asking to try and work out what he can have for himself. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> Sean, come on, bro. Right, no, when I, when I found out, it was kind of like, wow, how's he pulled that off? But then it was like, I feel like he's like the perfect person to make a film about because yeah. I know like your life's been really interesting you, you're, you're, you're a man on a mission so you're trying to achieve something yeah, yeah. and obviously like a lot of us like it's been a struggle yeah, yeah, and you yeah. have to deal with what life throws at you and obviously we can get into all that a bit more as we go along but just like yeah how did that come about like did, do you know Sean like nah I never met him until uh, the first week of 2017 yeah and we, had, we had a mutual friend Rebecca Robbins who was oh, in the yeah, video yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah, so she knew him, and she'd been speaking to Sean, and it said, "I'm look. I've been looking for a character for time to do a film and all. I just can't find one." Yeah. And Rebecca had just said, "Well, do one on Red Island." And then what? He just come and meet you and. No, I went to the Made in All thing. Do you know the the thing what he put in the first week? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then at Fruit on the night, there was a screening, but I didn't know what it was. And I just went along. Sure. And it was Sean screening a Syrian love story. Okay. So we kind of went up to each other in the bar and was like, I'm in South Park. You went, oh, you're a red eye, aren't you? And yeah. I just like, yeah, introduced ourselves like that. Wow, man. Cool. So what point was the Beats Boss when you met Sean? Where? It had just been okayed by Arco, so okay. I knew it was going ahead. But, I didn't, but you hadn't actually been working on it just Nah, yet. nah. Right. It didn't start until July the year after, so it was, a good, it was a good point to start. Yeah. Like the documentary. Yeah. So did he know that was what the focus of it was going to be, or was it that was whatever the focus you was... it for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as it like after getting to trust him, I just said to him like, if you if you want to film something you think is important, go just it. film it and let's go for it. And so how long was you filming? How long does that film like? What's the ninety months? Ninety months. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, man. Wow, man. <laughs> and yeah. on an average week, then how how long would you spend with Sean? Good three days a week. Wow. Yeah, I think he said when he came down to the edit, he had 337 hours of footage Shit. to wow. get into an hour and 17 minutes. <laughs> oh <dear laughs> yeah. So do you feel like you've sort of become like mates with uh, Sean then? Because obviously you've yeah, spent yeah. a lot of time together. Yeah, right? yeah. He's, like he's from Mullen as well and like, yeah. he's, he's a cool guy. Yeah, and I feel like he, he comes from a kind of similar place, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, definitely. He worked in a factory, didn't he? For, yeah, yeah. Did he well, say that was nice film? Yeah, yeah. I wish it's quite funny actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's loads of blocks taking the out the wife and that. <laughs> 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 so like after you met him then, how long after meeting him, did <coughs> did you say, right, we're gonna start filming? Like you met him at the City of Culture event? Yeah, yeah, and he he texted me the next day saying, I'm going away for a couple of weeks. When I get back, let's meet up and talk about what you want to do. Yeah. And pretty much straight away, it was like, all right, I'll get my camera out and we'll, we'll start filming, see how it goes. And, and what was your incentive then? Like, what was your, or what did you want to achieve from doing it? And what, what about it made you want to do it? Because oh. I, knew, I knew the work that we was going to do yeah. as the Beats Bus in the summer was going to be somewhat special. Yeah. So, so it's it was like perfect. In a documentary, yeah, yeah. 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 But... Bad. One thing I found quite interesting is like, I feel like there was quite a lot of shade thrown on uh, City of Culture and 
uh, Arco as well. Yeah. So obviously it's a good job. It's a good job you scarpered after at the end, didn't it? Because like <laughs> it's mad how all that like fell into place as yeah. well. How it all happened. It's, it's like just, it happened for a reason, almost. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's mad. It is mad. And then um, like with the Arco thing, I mean for me, this thing of like they just gave the equipment away to a school. Uh-huh. What's all that about? That almost White College as well, bro. Has got the best music yeah. studio. Probably that is real random when they've bought it for this specific thing, and then they're just like, "Oh no, we're just going to give it." Yeah. This. I know. Seems intentional, it's almost. Like, really like, they did it to spite you, yeah, yeah, even think... demoting you. What was all that about? <laughs> the whole thing was fucking ridiculous, <laughs> man. But it's but it's great for the film, though. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Sean was like that. <laughs> As your life was crumbling, <laughs> Sean was like, "Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be a star." <laughs> Yeah, definitely, man. All right, so the Pete's bus then, right? Because so I like I've checked in on the GoFundMe, you know, occasionally. Um, like th- when we was talking about bringing, uh, getting you to come in, you know, the, Stan was saying about how it like had a massive like surge in on the Sunday. It was Sunday night. Got, uh, yeah, the TV thing. I think it was at twelve k when just after I finished watching it. Yeah, so, like yeah. eleven o'clock, and did it twenty the next day or a couple of days after? Yeah, yeah. Last time I looked at like twenty eight k. Nearly twenty eight quid. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the in it, the film, it's funny because you, you say it's at sixty quid. Yeah, you, you say you do one, and it was sixty quid. Yeah, so, yeah. at what point was it? Was it when people first started seeing the screen into the film that like you saw like more money coming in, or is that is that what well, it built up? In, it was that like ten k earlier in the year as well? Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like when, before the film. Yeah, we launched it when like we started. launched the film. Yeah, that funding yeah. thing. So when you first the first, one, the first sixty quid one was that space house thing that we oh, went to. Waste, man. Oh, don't even, no, st- no. mate. Don't even give these guys any time, man. <laughs> oh, what a waste of time, mate. I just boil them off, man. They just want you to do all the work, don't they? Yeah, mega. They take thing. a cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Waste, know, waste, man. my life. So yeah, that was a sixty quid one. So, so that cut would have been about two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you build it up to twelve k before the film, then, or? No, no, we launched so it. Is that film. zero? Yeah, it was at zero when we launched. No, so sorry, it was about five hundred pound when we launched. Yeah, so you've gone from that to the, the twenty-eight k, just so with the film. Yeah, that's not through the film being head though. When, when we launched that thing at Sheffield, yeah, we managed yeah. to get some then, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, this big guy dropped five grand straight in the funding the night he watched the film in Sheffield. Really? Yeah. 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 Do you know who? A councillor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah councillor from Sheffield called Alex Grindo. Alex. And like, how, how excited was you both when uh-huh. you was watching it all just got up and up? Well, we like, didn't know. So really? We, what, you want, you want checking it? We, no, we launched the film. Yeah. And then we went back to the hotel to get changed because we was doing a live show on the night. Yeah, yeah. In Sheffield City Hall ballroom. It yeah, was yeah. absolutely dope. We didn't know about that funding until we walked into the ballroom and everyone was like, Rah! We was like, what's going on? <laughs> Have you seen funding? Have you seen your funding? And I went, boom, and I was like, oh, f*** it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, wow. no. So it's just, yeah, and then so, we just fucking ripped it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Was that from his, his pocket then, or was it from like Straight a... from his pocket, man, yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. I know, that was a good start, man. Bro, he good. was having like 5k to just drop on something. Oh, that was sick, I just dropped 5k. Uh, that's oh why I love so man. much about the night it aired, though, like all the random names, and it was like one minute ago, Joanne yeah. Balls just. <laughs> Do <you have> balls? <laughs> what a great name. Just drop that, and you could just tell it's just people have watched it and like it's felt random. something yeah. and yeah. wanted to, it. to help you. And yeah. that must feel that was so good. Cool. Oh, man. That must give you a lot of like vibes and energy. Like sort absolutely, of, it's quite uplifting, isn't it? Like yeah, all yeah. these strangers don't know you for shit, I know. and like, but especially they obviously could relate to you, right? In a way, yeah. though, especially now that it's like still going, even though you've hit your target. Yeah, I know. that's like people are still giving even though you don't necessarily like need eight it. grand over the target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's mad. In in a way though, you say strangers, but when you watch it, you really feel like you get to like. I, do you, you know what I think? It's just through. normal people, bro. That's been given the. Oh, funding. definitely. Yeah. I don't think any businesses are stepped in or anything yeah. like that. It's just normal, normal people. people. Man, so. But you, like you watch it and you can like I think a lot of people can really like really connect with with it because you're yeah. just so so genuine about everything. Yeah. And it's like yeah. Like a lot of the time, especially in documentaries, you can tell that there's an element of people putting something on, whereas there's none of that in this. It's just like real, raw, like, yeah, yeah, raw. yeah, like something you can like sit going to see your mate and, and sitting down and talking to him. Yeah, mate. I mean, like I, I can relate to everything I see, mate. And like, what what really touched me, and I think that what probably like won you over in a lot of people's heads because anyone you talk to, uh, say Steve Red Eye, yeah. 
Oh, he's a great guy. He's so <laughs> he's such a nice guy. Like no one's got anything bad to say about you. So you're already like l- likable, lovable from the off. But the way that you like engage with these kids, yeah, it's just like really touching. Mm. And like you really care about them, you go that extra mile to give them that effort and stuff. Like going to the house and stuff. When yeah. You're like, like when it's dark and like most people would be like, no, I've been at work. Yeah. I'm right. just gonna go home. You're like, no, I'm gonna go see how these kids are doing. It's brilliant, mate. And it obviously means so to me. You can see it <coughs> in the faces. Yeah, yeah. That kid with a stutter. Yeah. Do you know, to that. help him through that sort of thing. That's crazy. That. So that I he, think like lost his stutter just from madness. Yeah. That's and also, it just it kind of brings to light that like people like yourself are everywhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just doing their thing, bringing that bit of happiness to whoever they, they can, and getting your and, I, and it's funny because like you come out and uh, you're like, oh yeah, it's good because like it gives him that little you know the, the usual spiel right, gives him that happiness and like lifts him up and stuff. And then Sean's like, yeah, what? So do you do you get what 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 do you get of it then? <laughs> <Yes>. Not really. <laughs> I'm just off home now. <laughs> I've got twenty quid to last me two weeks. Oh man! But now, obviously, so what's what's gonna what's the deal with that money then? Like you, you know, you're like I say, you're an entrepreneur. You're running the beats, the beats bus. Yeah, yeah. It's yourself. Are you like business partners? Like how? Yeah, does that yeah. Work? Me, Dave, and Nigel. Yeah. Uh, a business partners in the business. Yeah. Um, Paul and SR2 are tutors. Nice. And that's, nice. And that's how we're running it. And then, so, like, are you got, what are you going to do with the money? We're going to go. I think that's what we all want to do. Yeah, we're going to go back to our original ethos and we're going to do free community work yeah. next year in the States and parks where kids are knocking about fucking smoking spice and getting yeah, drunk because yeah. they ain't got no better to do. Yeah. We're going to get them on the bus, man, and raise their aspirations. Wicked, man. Yeah. 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 Try, try and get some kids out of trouble. And what are you going to, so like obviously like 30 grand, I mean that's like a hell of a start right? Yeah. Because yeah. what, what was you want when you first started with Arco? Did you have any money behind that or was it just the oh, equipment? Know, man. And you're not, you're not getting paid to do any of that stuff are you? Like, no, that was a voluntary yeah. project manager job. Yeah. Like you see me doing in the film. And it so says like in the film like, it was like you had two jobs basically. <laughs> yeah. The amount of hours I put in out of work. Like, yeah. And that fact, every time right. you came out of that factory with a cig in your mouth, <laughs> I was like, please leave that job, man. You hate it, man. You just gotta leave it, man. Oh, just leave that job, mate. I can't believe they demoted you, man. Oh, like, you're, they give you the bus and they support you. Why would they, like, knock you down like that? Yeah. Just, just at the like, office, I was in blue eyed boy front page pictures up and that. Yeah. We're in the warehouse, it was causing a lot of jealousy with the people. Oh, who really? Was there. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, so it was like your peers, basically. Yeah, that's yeah, it's it. totally different from the warehouse to them. Well, you don't have to worry about them now, do you, mate? Nah. Uh, <laughs> just make sure, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just make sure that this beat bus thing, like, skyrockets up, mate, because yeah, you don't want to yeah. find yourself back there, mate. <laughs> Crying, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> it's mad as well, because I- in the film you're on about how you've had the idea for years and I swear I remember you being talking about it when we was living in Sunnybank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The house down yeah, Sunnybank. Man, the big yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I, 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 I remember, I remember that, that as well, yeah. yeah. So, um, easy to see it, just like, it's a reality now. Yeah, well, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> it's beautiful, man. So, sometimes I just sit and like shake my head and bring myself down a bit like, whoa. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, so, what, what was it like for you to watch the film then? The first time I watched it was when we launched it at Chef Doc Fest. I didn't yeah. see no preview. Just sat in a, in in a chair like a punter. Honestly, bro, the screen was so stupidly big, it was unreal. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Oh, Dave, there's heaps of people around as well. Oh, it was full, yeah, like 400 yeah. people. <laughs> Dave That's sat brave, next man. to me and he saw me crying. He was, he was holding my hand like my girlfriend would. Like all the way through the film, he was just yeah. sat there like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and what was, what, what, what was you crying at? Just like... The scenes with my daughter, my, my like me. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah. I, I got like to the brink of a bit of a tear there, mate. Yeah. yeah, you know, I've got like kids of my own, and I, I could see like you're doing everything that you can to try and like sort it out. And this is definitely going to help you. And I think like by bearing your story a bit, yeah, yeah, like that's going to pay pay off for you. Yeah. Other than the sad. daughter and stuff, like real sad. Yeah, mm. just the whole film. Pretty much yeah. most of it, yeah. And it why? is quite sad though, the film. No, the, this, I, the film is sad, but I think it's it's still got a lot of hope in it. Yeah, as, yeah, yeah. But it definitely like... But like underlying it's part, like I was it? saying like, to someone yeah. like, it's, it's, it's more sad watching it because we know the real person. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
there was times when I felt like I was sort of removed and like I, it, it was like when I was engrossed in it it was like I wasn't watching you but then <clears throat> I was watching with my partner and then we'd sort of like occasionally turn to each other and just say that's so sad isn't it and then it'd be like boom it's Steve that we're watching and it's yeah. like in the home and it's like all the sort of environment and the scene that we know mm. so it's kind of like an interesting way to watch it but mm. I get it like because it is sad but I think that, but I don't think you look sad, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think you look like almost defiant. Strong, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, real strong. You won't let anything like knock you down. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people would just uh, just pack, give up and just like pack it in. Yeah. Like especially to be like a, a musician, like independent musician. Yeah. I think a lot of people under that pressure with the kids and everything. I don't even think they would. I know they would because I've seen them do it. Do you know what I mean? So it takes a strong. Thank you, bro. Lion yeah, to fucking do that shit. Thank you, bro. For you, what's the message of the film? And what's the future for Red Eye, Steve, and the beat bus? Yeah, so the message I'd, I want people to take away from the film. Yeah. How important community work is with young people. And um, like just the journey of the kids in the film, man. Like, yeah. For me, the pinnacle of the film is when Harvey spits his verse straight out in the yeah, studio yeah. at the end. Mm, yeah. That's the full message of the film. To yeah, me. man. Spot so, on. Um, and next for the Beats Bus, like I say, next year we're going to be doing free community work. So we're going to research the 20th most deprived areas surrounding all. Yeah. And try and hit them. Oh, wicked. So, and, and then what will that be like weekly or like collecting with schools, that sort of thing? No, not schools, man. No. Like estates and shopping centres and that way. Yeah. Kids are getting just literally going to roll up and yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just invade them and that. Oh, yeah, roll up. Yeah. Do, like a, do like a maybe a one, <coughs> two day workshop there. And then say, like, any kids who really want to do it, yeah. buy some free bus passes, give them and see the studios on Springbank, get the bus down there, prove you want to do it, yeah. and do some recording. The team. That sounds sick, man. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Speaking of successes, Self Made Men, um, I think we've got a clip of uh, Snoop Dogg. Mm. I don't know if you've seen this. It's, uh, I think it's called Snoop Dogg Thanks Himself. Oh, yeah. I've thanks Himself. I hope it, I'm glad it said thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to bleep that. Yeah, um, basically he was giving like some sort of speech or I think he, he just got um, his Hollywood star. Right, oh, that's right, okay. Yeah. So it was on the Walk of Fame. It was on his podium, and he gave a speech in a way that only Snoop Dogg can give a speech. <laughs> and I thought it was quite good because it's happened this week. It's interesting. I'll be quite good to watch it, especially yeah. with like the way things have been going for you guys and like. In a way, you might feel like you can relate to uh, his message. Cool. So, without further ado, I feel like if I did one of these types of speeches, that's what I'd do. Because we always complain about like um, people like just thanking everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like, and like when well, you have to graft yourself in that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I did a motivational speech a few weeks ago in London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I, was, I, that was quite hard. Was right? you nervous? Yeah, very nervous. Yeah, yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Man? Yeah. Like that sort of thing. So it's this. This is this it. This better be the real video it. stamp. It's better not have mugged this off here. And this is the one you just pointed to. Don't <laughs> <laughs> put this on me, man. You just pointed to it. Don't put this on that one. It, but this one might show up. Actually, it definitely is going to oh. I want to thank me. <laughs> I want to thank me for believing in me. I want to thank me for doing all this hard work. <laughs> I want to thank me for having no days off. I want to thank me for, for never quitting. I want to thank me for always being a giver and trying to give more than I receive. I want to thank me for trying to do more right than wrong. I want to thank me for just being me at all times. Snoop Dogg, you a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I want to say, he's like, thank you. F thank me for everything, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it raises an interesting point because, like, do we need to start thanking ourselves rather than thanking? Because the one that gets me, right, and I don't know how you guys fe feel about this, but when people thank God first and they don't think about... Like thanking the mum and stuff And their dad like and the ones that slogged to, like, basically get them to where they are and they don't thank themselves for anything. But it's not a thing to thank yourself, right? You're supposed to, you're supposed to be humble. Yeah. Thank everyone around you that made you who you are. But should we be thanking ourselves? Because at the end of the day, like your determination and self-belief is what gets you to where you are. You still thank everyone else, right? But yeah, don't yeah. you deserve thanks? 
I mean, in many ways, you get you're getting facts out of you because you've got like yeah, people throwing money at you. Yeah. Exactly. Like everyone's loving your story, but when it comes down to it, can we be honest and say, yeah, like hard work pays off, and by acknowledging that he did all that is inspiring other people because I think maybe in this generation the idea is that like you don't really have to put much effort into it and you can become a star overnight yeah. and it's all about like stunting and flexing and like but not actually <coughs> having any substance yeah yeah and, and I feel so like I was saying that hard work trumps talent there you go hard work is talent bud because yeah. talent isn't just like some magical thing that just exists like you have to work hard to develop it yeah yeah and that gets you where you are that gets you noticed and that's why I sure wanted to make a film about you yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's just like something about... You'd already put in the groundwork. Yeah, mm. yeah. You'd already put in the groundwork, but... You, you guys... How I'd, old do you reckon you was when Lion King came I'd, out? I'd the, seen this. The cartoon. The original. Yeah. What, year, what year was it? I think 1994. Was it? Yeah. So I was... 19. I, I was five. I'd just been born. I was one. Yeah, so, I was so, 24. So you wouldn't be, you wouldn't have been like going out of your way to watch it, would you? Oh, I love like Disney that films, age. man. Did you? Watched everyone, yeah, yeah. yeah. What at that age as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I good. So, so then you're probably ex- excited as us all. Lion King was cool. Yeah, to yeah hear that yeah, Lion yeah. King, the official movie, was it a new, was it a new but movie? live action. Ooh. So I don't know what you're thinking. Like, yeah, live, live action, action, like real lions. <laughs> so wow. if you full screen it, the top. has it got the song? Did they talk? Like That's a good question, actually. I don't know. Wildlife program. Have you seen it? Well, it's like that, yeah, but like, <coughs> the trailer. Yeah. It's a film. I don't think so. Uh, it's just Lion King remade, but it's like real lions, right? Yeah. yeah. What? Well, it's not live action. I, don't know. I, don't know. I think they talk. Special effects. It's not live. It's not like live action. I know it's not real <laughs> lions, man. But you was acting like it was. <laughs> yeah, but it's meant to give the illusion that everything's real, man. Play the play the key trailer, man. It's like animated lions. Yeah, yeah, basically. Cool. But not like the original two D animation. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was, yeah, yeah, de- yeah. there was a big debate on Twitter when it came well, out. Not, about a, not a cartoon. Um, not a cartoon. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. See? My man at the wicket. Look, who is that? Is that your man? J- James L. Jones. James L. Jones. Mufasa. Yeah. That's the sickest part that you can use the same guy's mm-hmm. voice as well. Happy already. Yeah, man. Ah, Sylvania! Sylvania, I was a boy! I don't know the fucking words, man. Definitely gonna sit him and see this man. It's gotta be sick, yeah. isn't it? See, I'd say I'm more excited about this than the Pokemon. The Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. on. I'm, I'm way more, more excited, excited about this. this. I tell you why. Because he's like, what? Donald Glover? Yeah. yeah. Simba. Simba. Who's Donald Glover? And Simba. Yeah, Simba. Oh, there's so many characters, man. King and Michael Key. So many voices. It's gonna be Ace. Man. Oh. I'm probably more Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Summer? I thought it was going to be Christmas. Wow. <laughs> 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 it's a bit there. It's a bit there. It's a Christmas movie. Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh. hey, but, you know, we've got a Northern Soul to tide us over. Yeah, right. yeah. Until then. Yeah. 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 Get a few watches out of that in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've watched it twice already. Have you? Yeah. 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 I'm ready to watch it again, mate. It's just, tr- it's just like enjoyable and just like to see your own, even hearing Sean's voice. Like yeah. narrate it. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's just nice, man. It's good, man. And Somebody I'm put t- on Facebook, oh, what type of uh, like role model you to the kids driving about with a bus that's not insured? You know, because <laughs> yeah. insurance is great, isn't it? Uh, I break my phone. It goes, is your bus insured? Oh, nothing in my life's insured, Sean. <laughs> <short. laughs> yeah, someone put that on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people will pick on anything. Oh, honestly, man. there are them keyboard bastards. warriors, aren't they? Man? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I'm more excited for Pokemon. I'm not gonna lie, but only marginally. Yeah, because Pokemon's coming out as well. Live action. There's been yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Is, oh is the my voice god. A Pikachu. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's somewhat a bit cheesy about it's, it. Yeah, yeah, there is yeah. somewhat. Whereas that's cheesy. epic. That yeah, is truly yeah, yeah, epic. True. That's not Pokemon trying to be clever like in it. Yeah. How to get a Pokemon Pikachu on a bus? Fucking god! Pokemon. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, mate, I should have known he's a dad if, of two, mate. The joke's if, like that. If, I, if I'd have made that joke, Lance would have thrown something at me. Yeah. <laughs> that's my, that's, that was that's my Steve's, level man. Above your joke. Oh, come on, Your joke's just... You're like, just saying that. Yeah, when you've got an inspiring you're movie just, on the go, You're just mate. pandering to our guests. <laughs> All right. lucky. He's lucky. Yeah, definitely so, mate. As are you, so thank you, mate, for coming in respect, to the podcast. Man. Respect, man. With the man name, the Beats Bus crew, yes. Steve Arnott, Red Eye the Jedi, Phoenix, <laughs> making shit happen. Yeah, man. And we're just like all really proud of you and happy for you. Oh, yeah. So Thank happy for you. That everything's going well. well. Yeah. And definitely plug the podcast, get the people to tune okay. in. <laughs> Let us know what other local legends from home that you might want to, you know, see on the podcast that we can chat to. And if you haven't seen it yet, watch Northern Soul. Definitely it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah.